Hey guys, I thought I'd show in this video one of my newest uh, favorite knives. I haven't done a video on this, um, mostly just because there are so many out there already. But this is the production Triple Hot Design Dauntless. For many years, um, fans of Triple Hot Design, myself included, have been asking for what we were calling the Common Man Dauntless. Um, basically just a, a dauntless that most people could afford and most people could actually get their hands on. And um, they answered our request with this uh, production knife. I've owned a dauntless in the past. I owned the Strider dauntless for a while. Wish I'd hung on to it longer. Uh, even if it's just to sell it at the prices that it commands these days. And uh, this knife is every bit as high quality as that, if not uh, more so in a couple regards. Uh, they haven't revealed who they get to make this knife for them. Not really sure why that is. Yeah, you can tell it's very robust. This is the Mark I all titanium version, um, except for the blade, of course. That's S30V. Uh, I kind of had two exceptions uh, that I, I took to this knife. One is this bead blasted blade, which I haven't really done anything about um, except for keep it oiled. And uh, I don't really like bead blasting on steel because it gives a lot more surface area and sort of little micro cavities for um, rust to form. And I actually did notice uh, a little bit of rust within the first few days of carrying this knife. Uh, I just gave it a light um, rub down with um, some cutting board oil. I use cutting board oil. Actually, uh, whenever I get any of my knives, I take them apart, uh, wash them with dish soap, and uh, dry them off. And uh, when I put them back together, I put cutting board oil on them as, uh, as the oil of choice. And that's just because it's food safe. Um, it actually does help to prevent corrosion of like kitchen knives and other such, um, you know, anything you put it on really. So it works well for my pocket knives and if I feel like pulling my pocket knife out and cutting an apple, I'm not concerned about, you know, what I'm putting in my mouth. One of the great design features of uh, the Dauntless is this uh, forward finger choil. So you can really choke, choke up on the grip and um, you know, get in and do some fine detailed work with the blade. Uh, the other thing that I didn't much care for about uh, this knife was the pocket clip. It had um, kind of a loose, uh, tingy sounding um, deep carry pocket clip. I am not a fan of deep carry pocket clips. I'm not concerned with uh, hiding the fact that I have a pocket knife in my pocket. And um, I would much rather have everyone know that I have one and um, be able to pull it out of my pocket than to hide it from someone and have to like really dig and try hard to get it out of my pocket for no real reason. Like I don't, I don't want the extra hassle just to hide it because I don't have any reason to hide it. So uh, what I did was actually take uh, the clip off my old Benchmade MPR uh, 755. Uh, the Seabert mini pocket rocket and um, put it on here as far as the screw alignment it is a direct swap um, I just needed to grab some longer screws out of my drawer and uh, use those if you use the screws from the Seabert uh, the Benchmade 755 uh, those should work uh, just be aware for this one here because it actually goes into the titanium uh, backspacer. Let me show the backspacer. Titanium backspacer. Uh, you will need to shorten this screw if you use the exact length of screw that's in the Benchmade knife. Uh, this one's fine. You can kind of see it right there. Sticks out like a millimeter or something. Uh, definitely doesn't like get in the way of the blade when it's closed or, you know, not even close. So that's good. 
The lockup on this is very solid. Um, the blade alignment is spot on. And uh, they actually leave kind of less room for error than uh, some other knives do. But it's well executed, so there is no error, you know? Um, this contouring here uh, makes it easy for left hand or right hand uh, deployment using the thumb studs. Uh, someday I would like to see uh, a larger uh, four inch blade version of this uh, production dauntless with a flipper. That would be a dream. Yeah, so i um, really liking carrying it with the, the Seabert pocket clip. Sort of gives it a little bit of uh, a Seabert dauntless appearance. Uh, Seabert was one of the, the first few people um, to make a dauntless. I think Rick Hinderer was the first. Uh, of course, if you don't know the history of the Dauntless, I uh, should have done some research so I could give you guys better history in this video. But um, uh, Patrick Ma, the founder of Triple Out Design, uh, he designed this knife. And then every few months for the last several years, uh, he'll contact a different custom knife maker and ask them to make basically their interpretation of it. So uh, they, no two uh, you know, custom Dauntlesses will be exactly the same. Depending on who's making it, they'll incorporate different features. Some are flippers, some aren't. Some are a little bit longer, some are a little bit shorter. Some have the forward choil, some take it out. Um, I think they pretty much all, I think one of the requirements is that they all have these uh, three fullers on the handle, single fuller on the blade. Uh, doesn't They don't have to have that on the back side. Some of them do, some of them don't. Um, I would try to name some of the people that have, have made their own version of this. Uh, forgive me if I butcher some names. I know that Valaton, Valaton has made a version of this. Uh, he's a guy that's famous for the in-bolster uh, automatic, so you push down on his bolsters and that is the thing that deploys the, the blade. Um, Elschwitz, Alan Elschwitz, and um, Brian Fell. Hotler. Please forgive me if I'm butchering any names. I read these names all the time. I don't hear them spoken, so... Yeah. Brad Southard, uh, Southard has made a version of this uh, very recently. Um, his seemed to be incredibly highly sought after. Um, I mean, for good reason, of course. Uh, he is an excellent knife maker. And, uh... Yeah, these are very visually striking. Um, they're similar in appearance to the production one, actually, but uh, this, the handles are more contoured uh, by a substantial amount. And uh, most of them are flippers, I think. Most of the newer all titanium ones are. Uh, he's done several runs. The older runs were, uh, they had um, green or black scales with bolsters. I'm not someone that uh, believes in jimping. I don't believe that it is super functional or it's something that needs to be there. Um, that being said, this this has jimping here that um, looks really sharp in all the pictures I saw. Like I thought it might actually be uncomfortably sharp, but uh, there's no discomfort when placing my thumb here. I feel that uh, personally, I feel that the handle design itself is much more important than jimping. Um, the handle design making the the handle of a knife lock into your hand um, that that's what's going to keep your hand from going anywhere not the texturing of the scales not jimping on the blade or the handle or anything along those lines it's uh, it's all about the design and uh, this handle is very well designed it's made to fit in your hand in uh, many different ways and uh, does an excellent job in all of those ways. So yeah, I didn't actually figure I'd have enough uh, to talk about about the Dauntless uh, that hasn't already been said. Hopefully I didn't repeat um, things that other people rambled about in their own videos. But uh, yeah, this is uh, my production Dauntless Mark I. Very happy to have it. A friend actually picked it up at the Hayes Valley location and uh, hand carried it to Hawaii to me. So, oh. Pete Gray Bead. Pete Gray's the man. Check him out. Thanks.